take this opportunity to greet all of you, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you wherever you are in your homes. The Lord is good, and I believe this morning the Lord is going to be shaping our destinies, is going to be transitioning us in the year of transformation and growth. Amen. Without a waste of time, let's go and read a scripture from 2 Samuel chapter 9, from verse 1 until around 10. Amen. 2 Samuel chapter 9, from verse 1. I read. David asked, is there anyone left still of the house of Saul? to whom I can show kindness of, for Jonathan, Jonathan's sake. Now there was a servant of Saul's household named Ziba or Ziba, whatever you want to call him. They summoned him to appear before David, and the king said to him, Are you Ziba? At your service, he replied. The king asked, Is there no one still alive from the house of Saul? to whom I can show God's kindness. Ziba answered the king, there is still a son of Jonathan, he is lame in both feet. Where, where is he? The king asked. Ziba answered, he is at the house of Maki, son of Emiel in Lodabar. So King David had him brought from Lodabar, from the house of Maki, son of Emiel. When Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. David said, Mephibosheth, at your service, he replied. Do not be afraid, David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will always eat at my table. Verse 8, Mephibosheth bowed down and said, What is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me? Then the king summoned Ziba, Saul's steward or servant, and said to him, I have given you your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your son and your servants are to farm the land for him and bring him the crops so that your master's grandson may be provided for. And Mephibosheth, grandson of your master, will always eat at my table. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Hallelujah. The Bible introduces us to a man called Mephibosheth. He is the son of Jonathan and thus a grandson of King Saul. He was lame, as the Bible says, in both of his legs. And we are told, according to 2 Samuel chapter 4, verse 4, the reason of his lameness. There was war in Israel, and consequently both his grandfather, King Saul, and his father, Jonathan, died in a battle. And now the nanny or the nurse who was taking care of the young man who was at that time five years old, the Bible says she got scared and decided to carry him along and she decided to flee, to run away, hallelujah, to flee with the boy. And in the process of escaping in a hurry, the boy fell and unfortunately, the injury made him 
paraplegic, which means both of his legs were not working anymore. Hallelujah. This man, Mephibosheth, was born in the palace. He had servants who ran around serving him. He was born in opulence. He was born in great wealth, in great comfort, in absolute luxury. He had everything that he needed, all the material things, all the food, all the clothes, whatever you can think of that this world provides he had. He lacked nothing and he was the envy of everyone in Israel, especially his peers. But now in this text, he woke up one day in a place called Lodabar, my God. From the palace to Lodeba. Lodeba means the place of no pasture, which means there was no grazing. Cattle will not survive there. It was dry. There was no rain. There was no production. Hallelujah. Lodeba, Lodeba, the place of barrenness, the place of sterility, the place of inefficiency. Lodabar, a place of nowhere, in the middle of nowhere, a place where there is lots of disfavor and many disadvantages. Lodabar is a place of nothing. When you look at the, the word Lodabar in, hallelujah, in Hebrew, no pasture, no nothing, the place of nothing. He is moving from the palace, the place of abundance, the place of plenty. And now he is in Lodaba, the place of scarcity, the place of emptiness, the place of isolation. Hallelujah. Lodaba also means the place of no communication, which means whoever he used to communicate with in the palace, Right now, he can't communicate with them. When you are in Lodaba, people who checked you every day, in your opulence, in, in your palace, when things are fine, they can't check you anymore because you are in Lodaba. Lodaba is a place of no word. There is no word from the Lord. There is no word of encouragement. Hallelujah. No one remembers to talk to you. No one remembers your name anymore. No one remembers you anymore. Ah, Lodaba, Lodaba, a place of no communication. A place, a state of loneliness. People who visited you, people who dined with you, people who had parties and birthday parties and memories with you, hallelujah, in the palace, are nowhere to be found because you are in Lodaba. People who used to call you even in the middle of the night, they don't call you anymore because you are now in Lodaba. Hallelujah. Lodaba, Lodaba. Lodaba is a place of hopelessness. You are in a situation where you are hopeless. You are in a situation where you have given up in life. You are in a situation where you, you no longer have hope in anything. You are in a situation where your life itself, hallelujah, is nothing to you anymore. You feel worthless. You have given up on your destiny. You have given up on your dreams. Hallelujah. And in Lord above, it's not only you who is hopeless. Even those who believed in you don't believe in you anymore. They have buried your dreams. They have given up on your dreams. They have given up on your potential. They've buried your potential. They've buried your possibilities. They've given you a red card. And that's why they don't check on you anymore. Because uh, as long as, uh, according to them, I rather, according to them, uh, you are dead even if you are walking. Because you are in uh, Lodaba. In Lodaba, Lodaba is a place of shame. It's a place of embarrassment. 
is a place where the devil put you to shame. Is a place where, hallelujah, my God, your nakedness is exposed in Lodabar. In Lodaba, you are embarrassed with yourself. In Lodaba, you are shameful of yourself. In Lodaba, you undermine who you are. In, in Lodaba, you don't believe in yourself anymore because of the shameful things that you are looking around. My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. The place of shame. You are not the person you thought you were anymore. You thought you were a capable young man, a capable young lady. Hallelujah. A, cap a capable young man with a bright future ahead, with a beautiful destiny, a story to write tomorrow, the son of a king. But in Lodeba, you are crippled. You are stagnant. You can't move because you are in Lodeba. Lodeba is a place of fear, a place of dismay, a place of uncertainty, a place of worry. Hallelujah. Am I speaking to someone? Hallelujah. He, he was dropped. He was dropped by mistake and now he is in Lodeba. I, I want to speak to someone who is in Lodeba, not because of what he did. Hallelujah. You are in Lodeba and you are crippled, not because of what you did yesterday, but but you are in Lodeba because of what happened in your family. You are in Lodeba because you just found yourself, my God, in Lodeba. You found yourself crippled on both legs. Hallelujah. I, I want to talk to someone. Hallelujah. There's someone who dropped you. Hallelujah. It's not your fault to find you in Lodeba. It's not your fault that you can't move on. It's not your fault that you can't progress. Hallelujah. There are times where you find yourself in a mess but you say to, to yourself I deserve this because I messed up yesterday but with Matthew Bosheth was in, in a situation that he doesn't know about in a situation he doesn't know about hallelujah it's very painful and distressing to go through pain caused by someone else it was not his fault it was not his mistake that his father died. It was not his fault. It was not his mistake that his grandmother died. It was not his fault. It was not his mistake that he got out of the palace or the family of Saul got out of the palace. It was not his fault. It was not his fault that he was crippled because someone was carrying him. It was not his fault. Have you ever ended up in a situation that was not your own fault but you had to bear everything Everything. Hi, my God. Hallelujah. You are just dropped by mistake. You are traumatized because of someone else. You are not sleeping at night. You live in fear because of someone else who came into your space. It's not your fault to find yourself depressed. It's not your fault. Someone just came in and abused you physically, emotionally, and sexually. Now you are crippled. And in Lodeba, broken for years because of someone else. He is in Lodeba and seems like everyone forgot about him. Hallelujah. I want to speak to someone, whether it's your fault or it's someone's fault. It's time for Lodeba to leave you alone. It's time for you to come out of Lodeba. I'm speaking to someone. Maybe you're feeling sorry for yourself because someone did this to you. But how long will you cry? How long will you mourn? How long will you be, be there in Lodeba? I want to speak to you this morning. I want to tell you that it's your time to rise up and walk. It's your time to do something with your life. Your future is bright. God is looking for you. He is looking for someone like you. God is looking for a vessel of honor. God is looking for you. Hallelujah. He is in Lodaba and seems like everyone forgot about him because at times when you are in a situation 
situation, people forget about you. And you even think, even God has forgotten about you. But I've got good news for you. That even if your friends forgot about you, even if they no longer answer your call, there is a king who is waiting on your call. Oh my God. Even if they forgot about you, even if those who used to help you, even if those who used to encourage you, don't do it anymore because you are in Lodabah and they have given up in you. There is someone who has not given up on you. And I hear the king says, Ziba, where is Mephibosheth? Where is Mephibosheth? Hallelujah. And now I hear the king remembering you right now. Hallelujah. The Bible says they summoned Ziba, who was a servant of Saul to King David. And King David says, Ziba, is there anyone in the house of Jonathan? And Ziba says, yes, there is a son who is called Mephibosheth. But there is a problem. You cannot do anything. You cannot use him. He is crippled on both sides. That's why he is in Lodeba. And the king says, I don't care whether he is crippled or not. I don't care where he comes from. I don't care about his shame. I don't care about his background. I don't care about his shortfalls. I don't care about his weaknesses. All I want to know is, is, is there still someone that I can show favor? Is there still someone that I can show kindness? Is there still someone that I can show mercy? Hallelujah. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Favor and grace. Because Ziba did not understand that grace belongs to those who don't deserve it. Favor, grace belongs to those who don't qualify. And the king says, don't talk about qualification. I said, go for him. Go and bring him back. I want him here. Even if he's crippled, even if he's messed up, I want him here in the palace, in my presence. When he is in my presence, I know what to do with him. Crippled as he is, messed up as he is. I'm not looking for you, Ziba. I am looking for Matthew Bosheth, who had given up on life. I want him, and I want to bring him back here to me and tell him he is my son. He belongs in the palace. I want to talk to someone right now. I'm talking to Matthew Bosheth. Let me tell you, you thought they forgot about you, but God had not forgotten about you. Hallelujah. God has not forgotten about you. God hasn't forgotten about your pain. God hasn't forgotten about your struggles. God hasn't forgotten about your challenges. God hasn't forgotten that you are in Lodeba. He knows your address, that you are in the house of Makia. He knows where you are. Let me tell you something. He is coming for you. He is coming for you. Right in Lodaba. He is coming for you. Right in that Peter. He is coming for you. Hallelujah. He has seen your pain. He has seen your tears. He has seen your struggles. And he's saying to Ziba, go get him for me and bring him into my presence. I'm prophesying to someone who is in Lodaba, the place of answer I'm speaking to someone who is in a place of no production. I'm speaking to someone who is stagnant in life. I'm speaking to someone who is in the prison of his life. I'm here to tell you, you have entered into a season of remembrance. God has remembered you. God is calling you by name. They have mentioned your name in the heavens and the angels are coming for 
you. They are coming for you. He has not forgotten about you. I thank God. I thank God. I thank the Lord. I'm speaking for I'm speaking to someone right now. I have a message for someone who is in Lodaba, in that dry place, in that stagnant place. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, let them forget about you. But God knows about you. God is concerned about you. God knows what you're going through. God knows your affliction. God knows you are not sleeping at night. God knows you are like. God knows about your tears. God knows about your lameness. God knows about your weaknesses. And he is coming for you. He is coming for you. And I did let to a Murphy Bosheth. I did let to someone in Lord Baha. Ugu Kumbuli le Unkulunkulo. Ugu Puti Jehovah. Ugu Kutunzuki le Squemba. You are entering a season. Hallelujah. You are coming out of a season you are going to forget. You are entering a season of favor. Because when God remembers you, favor is your portion. When God remembers you, change is inevitable. When God remembers you, something must change. When God remembers you, closed doors must open. When God remembers you, the Red Sea must open. When God remembers you, your enemies must step aside. When God remembers you, those mountains must be flattened. When God remembers you, that dry place becomes fruitful. When God remembers you, that womb must start to give birth. When God remembers you, you start to conceive. When God remembers you, things start to turn around. Things to touch to turn around. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Hallelujah. Oh, let me say this to someone in Lodeba. You watch them being promoted. You watch them going up. You have been, oh my God, they were blessed. They've been fruitful, enjoying all, whatever they had. But now I prophesy to you, this is your turn, this is your time. When God remembers you, hallelujah, all your prayers are answered. And now Ziba goes to Lodeba, the house of Maki, and he arrives there. And he says to Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth, pack your bags. Mephibosheth, pack your bags. Mephibosheth, whatever you have, put it in the bag. We are going. Where are we going, Ziba? The king is calling for you. You are going to the palace. The king has summoned you to come. I want to speak to Mephibosheth, who is in Lodeba, who is crippled and lame, who can st can't stand up for himself. He cannot stand up for himself. Who can feed himself? Who can do anything for himself? I'm telling you, in Lodeba, you lived in shame. There is no pasture. There is no production. You had low self-esteem and shame. But I'm here to tell you right now, you need to pack your bags because the king is calling you to the palace. We are getting out of Lodeba. My God, my God, my God, my God. My God, my God. Pack your bags, pack your bags, pack your bags. Pack your bags. We're not coming back here. Pack your bags, pack your bags. Not in Lodeba anymore. We are coming, we are not coming back. We are out and not coming back. Get out of that Lodeba. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out of that insecurity. Get out, get out, get out. Get out of that bitterness. Get out, get out, get out. Get out of that pain. Get out, get out, get out. The Lord is calling you out to get out. Get out of that pain. Get out of that cocoon. Get out of that hitting. Get out of that prison. Get out of that bright place. Say, Say bye bye to pain. Say bye bye to affliction. Say bye bye to the dry place. Say bye bye to lack. Say bye bye to begging. Say bye bye to suffering. Bye 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 bye. I'm not coming back here. Hallelujah. I'm not coming back here because God promised me I will not suffer affliction the second time. I'm not going back to Lodeba. Not in Lodeba. Not going back. There 
there forever. Oh my God. I imagine Mephibosheth and he was saying I might be crippled but I'm coming out. Oh my God. If it means crawling I will do it. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I will use whatever I have. If it's the voice I will use it. If it's the hands I will use it. If it's my body I will use it. But one thing I know if the king says come out I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Let me talk to someone. I might still be broke but I'm coming out of that Lodaba. I might still be divorced but I'm coming out of that Lodaba. I might still be in pain even right now as I walk out but I'm telling you I am walking out. Mama, mama, mama. I might still not have money. Not yet blessed physically, materially but I'm telling you I'm walking out in pain. I'm walking out in poverty. I'm walking out. I don't care what's happening. I will see what the king has for me. I'm coming out of Lodabha. I'm talking to someone because there are some people who have been in Lodabha and they don't want to come back of Lodabha because they have accepted that they belong to Lodabha. I'm here to tell you, come out of Lodabha. I don't care how long you have been in Lodabha. This is your season of remembrance. You are coming out out. Hallelujah. In John 5, the man was in the pool 38 years. But thank God, after 38 years, he came out. I'm talking to someone. The bleeding woman suffered for 12 years. But thank God, after 12 years, she came out. I'm talking to you right now. God has remembered you. God has remembered you. You are coming out. You are coming out. With that low self-esteem, pick yourself up and come out. One thing for sure, I'm not staying in Lodeba. I'm not staying in Lodeba. The king is calling me out of Lodeba. Bye-bye, Marquis. Thank you for taking care of me. Even though we are suffering in your house, because Maki also means a troublesome man. Even though it was hard in your house, even in Lodeba. But I'm here to say bye-bye because someone is calling me. I'm bidding farewell to the house of Maki. You, my God, I'm not coming back. The king is calling me. You see, when someone was calling me, I would doubt and say, maybe I'm coming back. But when the king is calling me, when I'm called by the king, my life will never be the same again. When I'm called by the king, my situation will not remain the same. When I'm called by the king, hallelujah, the one who changes destinies, I know something is about to turn around. I thank God I'm not called by other people. I thank God that I am called by a king. A king, because when a king decrees a thing, it is established. Oh, thank God for the voice of a king. Ah, he has called me, and there is no reverse key here, because the king has authority and power over this nation. Oh, the king is calling me. Oh, he has the power to bless, the power to give life. I thank God the king is calling me. His weight is final. Hey, the king is calling me. Silver and gold belongs to me here. He is more than enough. Oh my God. Oh, he has something I am looking for. The king is calling me. He is the Alpha and the Omega. The king is calling me. He is El Shaddai. The king is calling me. He is Jehovah Jireh. The king is calling me. My life will never be the same again. I'm speaking to Mephi Boshet. I'm speaking to Sister Mephibosheth. I'm speaking to Brother Mephibosheth. You don't belong there in Lodeba. You belong in the palace. You were born in the palace, not in the place of pain. You were born in the palace, the place of abundance, the place of safety, the place of deliverance, the place of restoration. You are not born in the place of scarcity. You are not born in the place of emptiness. You are born in the place of pl 
complaint. Hallelujah. Maybe let me remind Mephibosheth. Let me remind you of who you are. Because sometimes we go through too much and we forget who you are, who we are anymore. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, Saul, who was the first king of Israel, is your grandfather. Let me tell you, Jonathan, who was the son of King Saul, is your father. Hallelujah. You are a prince. You are the son of a king. You are the child of a king. You have the bloodline of kings. Don't allow Lodeba to define who you are. You are a child of a king. Don't allow poverty to divine who you are. You are a child of a king. Don't allow unemployment to tell you who you are. You are a child of a king. Don't allow pain to define who you are. You are a child of a king. Don't allow affliction to tell you who you are. You are a child of a king. Don't allow failure to define what's happening tomorrow. You are a child of a king. Check your birth certificate. You were born in a place called heaven. That's why the Bible says your citizenship is in heaven. Hallelujah. Your passport says heaven. Your ID says heaven. Your citizenship is in heaven. Your midwife was the Holy Spirit. Your father is God, Jehovah Sabbath. And your elder brother is Jesus. You are seated with him in high places. My God, am I speaking to someone? Your situation should not define your identity. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are God's own special people. I'm here to tell you that you are the king's child. The king's child. I might not look like the child of a king now. Watch the space. I might not be living in the palace, but watch the space. Because I know who I am. I'm a child of a king. I'm, I'm royalty. I'm royalty. If you don't see royalty, if it doesn't show up right now, uh, if I'm not the head right now, physically, materially, hallelujah, if I'm not above right now, just watch the space. If I'm not fruitful, if I'm not productive, if I'm not moving from glory to glory, if I'm not blessed physically, looking blessed, let me tell you, watch the space. Hallelujah. Watch the space. I don't belong here in Lodeba. I belong in the palace. The king is coming to get me. The king is coming to get me. I'm talking to someone. I'm talking to someone who has been in Lodeba long enough. I'm talking to someone who has been in pain long enough. I'm talking to someone who has cried for too long. I'm talking to someone who has suffered for too long. I'm talking to someone who has depressed, who was depressed for too long. I'm talking to someone who has been hurt for too long. I'm here to tell you the king is coming for you. Take your bags. Pack your bags right now. Pack your bags right now. Mephibosheth appears before the king. Hallelujah. And the king says to him, do not be afraid. I'm going to show you kindness in the presence of the king. Do not be afraid because only goodness and mercy shall follow you. He shall crown you with loving kindness and with favor. Hallelujah. And now David, as I conclude, David says to Mephibosheth, I shall restore to you all the land belonging to your grandfather. The legacy of your family, all the hidden treasures, whatever belonged to the king, King Saul, whatever belonged to Jonathan, your father, whatever belonged to your family, even the ones you don't know, I'm going to give you back. I'm going to give you back. I'm going to give you back. I'm speaking to a Mephibosheth right now. I know it has been tough in the last six months. I know it wasn't easy in the last six months. But I'm here to speak to Mephibosheth right now. I see restoration. We are entering a season of restoration. We are entering a season of restoration. Some of you, your business were closed. Some of you, your contracts were ended. Some of you, hallelujah, your contract were 
were cut into half. But I'm here to tell you, you are entering a season of restoration. Restoration. Whatever the locust has eaten this year, whatever the kinkawem has eaten this year, whatever the enemy has eaten this year, I declare to you, God says to you, he shall restore double what you have lost. I declare right now, whatever the devil has taken from you, whatever the devil has eaten from you, I declare he shall vomit it right now in Jesus' name. It's coming back, it's coming back, it's coming back, it's coming back. And now David says, uh, Ziba and his 15 sons and 27, which means 35 employees, shall work for you. Hallelujah, my God. I'm prophesying to someone, 35 employees will work for you. I've given you the land. I've given you the company. Right now, I'm giving you employees. I'm giving you an, employ, an, an, an empire. I'm giving you a corporate. I, I'm speaking to someone right now. Just from Lodaba, unemployed, I see you owning a corporate. I see you owning a company. Restoration. They fired you at work and you are busy crying. You did not know that the Lord was giving you 35 employees. You are complaining about a promotion that the door was closed and they gave it to someone less qualified. I'm here to tell you, God is turning things around. Restoration. One door is closed, but a better door is open. I'm speaking to someone. Restoration. In this season, the year 2020, don't worry about the past six months. It was just Lodaba. We are entering a spring, a season of spring. Barcelona, even Mikari, even trees, they testify about about what is coming in your life because they are starting to bud, they are starting to blossom, they are starting to, oh my God, the branches are starting to brighten up because the Lord is bringing spring in your life. What is spring to the trees? The spring to the trees is a new season, is a new beginning. It was not easy for them in winter, but I want to thank the Lord that God is doing a new thing. There is a new season that is coming in your life. You are coming out of pain. You are coming out of Lodeba. And God is restoring you. I declare a new beginning. I declare a new beginning. My God, I prophesy to someone, you are not going to be an employee. I see 35 employees under you. And now listen to what King David says, King David says, King David says, they will work for you, they will work the land, they will work in the company, all those 35 employees, but as for you, don't go to the field, I want to cover your weakness, I want to cover you, because when you go out there, they will laugh at you. I, 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 I want you to eat at my table. I want you to eat at my table. And people will make money for you. You eat at my table. And I'm looking at Mephi Bosheth. Sitting at the king's table. Covered by the king, covered by the table. Covered by the opulence and the wonder, wonderful things in there. And when everyone looked at the princess and looking at the sons and daughters of the kings, all they saw was handsome, beautiful people. Hallelujah. His crippleness was covered. I'm speaking to someone right now. You might not be delivered as yet, but God is going to cover your shame. Just come into the table. Just come into the house. Hallelujah, come into the house. Lord Abba might appear in your legs, but come into the house. The Lord will cover you, my God. The Lord will cover you. The Lord will cover. The Lord will cover. The King will cover your nakedness. 
Hallelujah. You will cover your nakedness. Glory to Jesus. I declare whatever you lost in Jesus' name. May it be your health, be it money, business, contract, position, whatever you lost, I declare is coming back to you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. May your finances be restored. May your marriage be restored. May your joy be restored. May your health be restored. Hallelujah. My God, I declare people will show you favor, will show you kindness, and favor will set you apart. I declare you shall rise again. I declare you shall rise again. If David can rise, Mephibosheth will also rise. David was in the cave. He never thought that one day he will be king and the promise that was promised by God through Samuel will come to pass. Running as a fugitive from King Saul. But he is now the king over Israel. You will also rise. You will also rise. I don't know where you are. It's your season to rise up. Arise and shine for the glory of the Lord is upon you. We are going to pray. We are going to pray right now. Hallelujah. I'm speaking to someone who is right down there, is your time to arise. I'm speaking to someone in Lodeba, is your time to rise up. I don't know where you are, right in your houses, I want us to go and pray. We're going to pray for a season of restoration. We're going to pray for our families, our businesses. We're going to pray right now. Let the restoration in this season of spring, let it come upon my life. Let it come upon my life. Thank you, Jesus. Arise again. Thank you, Jesus. Arise again. Arise again. For heroes again. Father, we thank and we bless you. We give it glory. We worship you. Just pray wherever you are. Just pray. Speak to the Lord right now. Hallelujah. There's an anointing in your house. There's an anointing in the presence of the Lord. There's a season of restoration. There's a grace for remembrance. A grace for restoration. Right now, Raka Baba, whatever I have lost in this season, I declare spring in my life. I declare God is doing a new season the name of Jesus. I thank you Father. I bless your name I give it Lord. I declare restoration upon that marriage in the name of Jesus. I declare restoration right now upon that business in the name of Jesus. I declare restoration right now upon your finances in the name of Jesus. I declare restoration of your joy. Restoration of your peace. Restoration in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In your career, in your job. I declare restoration. Restoration of relationships. Restoration in the name of Jesus. I declare restoration of your health. 
in Jesus' name. Any pain, any sickness, we rebuke it, we bind it right now. In the name of Jesus, we destroy every yoke of Lord upon your life. We destroy it in the name of Jesus. Every yoke of sickness, every yoke of failure, every yoke, hallelujah, of breakdowns. Right now, we break it upon your neck, and God is doing a new thing in your life in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless your name. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. We are getting out. We are coming out of Lord Abba. We are coming out. The King is calling us. The King is calling us. He is calling us out. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Give it to Lord. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying for right now for someone who is in Lodaba, in the hospital right now. I speak healing upon you right now in Jesus' name. Someone on a ventilator, someone in ICU, I speak healing right now in the name of Jesus. Healing right now, you are coming out right now in Jesus' name. The Lord knows that address, the Lord knows that cubicle, the Lord knows that hospital. You are coming out. I speak healing. I speak deliverance. I speak restoration of your health. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you and I bless you. Every Mephibosheth in Lodeba. Right now, I speak restoration. Whatever you lost is coming back to you. Double is coming back to you. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. I bless you. I give it glory. I worship your holy name. I worship your holy name. I want to pray with someone. If, if you say, Pastor, you're speaking about the king, but I don't have a relationship with the king. I want to pray with you. You need to connect with the king. You need to connect with Jesus. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Connect with him. He will bring you out of Lodeba. Doesn't matter where you are. The king will always remember you. He's a wonderful man. He's a good man. He's a good God. Hallelujah. His grace is more than sufficient. Doesn't matter what you did. You messed up. He doesn't check all those. He just bring you back because of his grace. I want to pray with you. If you want to receive him this morning, pray with me as I pray this prayer. Just say, Lord Jesus, I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. I am born again. I am your child. In Jesus' name. If you have prayed that prayer, you are a child of a king. You are born again. May God richly bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord.